Why are you always so on top of things? How come you never forget to do stuff? Oh, I wish I were as organized as you. I never used to think of myself as an especially organized person until people started telling me these things. And then I realized that a key difference between me and them was that I used a task manager and they did not. If you also want people telling you how organized you are and that you always seem so on top of things, and if you're considering using either OmniFocus or Things to make that happen, then this is the video for you. Hey folks, my name is Peter Uckies and I have created successful video courses on both OmniFocus and Things. In those courses, as well as right here in my free videos on YouTube, I teach workflows on how to be more productive and to be more organized. Now, especially if you're interested in OmniFocus, you may have heard about me before because I've written for OmniFocus.com and also for a website called The Sweet Setup. In this video, we're gonna be comparing OmniFocus with Things 3. Now, both of these apps are great project-based task managers that allow you to use a workflow such as David Allen's getting things done. I've been using OmniFocus since 2011, so that's eight years now. But every now and then, an app comes along that catches my interest, and Things was one such app. So for months long stretches over the past few years, I've actually been using Things 3 instead of OmniFocus. Either way, both of these apps are really good, and I want to help you choose between these two apps to see which one is right for you. But first, a quick personal note. Why are task managers so important to me? As I tried to convey at the beginning of the video, people are always telling me that I seem so on top of things or that I seem so organized. And using a task manager really does help me to be more productive and to be more organized. And I've been using task managers for a long time, but they became even more important to me in 2016 and 2017 when I was dealing with a pretty serious case of burnout. My memory was suddenly really impaired. I had trouble focusing. I was experiencing a lot of stress and I started to rely on my task manager even more and it helped me get through a pretty tough time. Now I'm healthy and happy and productive, but I still use my task manager every day. When I finish my breakfast in the morning, one of the first things I do is I open my task manager and I see what are all the things that are coming due and what are the things that I had planned to work on today. Long story short, OmniFocus and things are really important to me and they can become tremendously important to you too. So let's see how they stack up. And just before we start, I encourage you to watch all the way to the end of the video because at the end, I'll be sharing some free resources for both of these apps. So let's go. Let's get one thing out of the way first. Which devices do you need to run OmniFocus or Things? Well, of course, both of these are Apple devices only. Now, Things is pretty much the same between your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac. So Things is great to use even if you just have one of those three devices. And of course, if you have all three of those devices, then there's really nice syncing between them. OmniFocus is a little more difficult. I recommend that you have at least an iPad or a Mac to run OmniFocus on. The iPhone-only OmniFocus experience is not quite as good as the iPhone-only Things experience. So for OmniFocus, I recommend having an iPad or a Mac at least. But of course, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, and a Mac, it'll all work very smoothly together. There's also OmniFocus for the web, a recent introduction, which is sort of a limited version of OmniFocus that you can run in your web browser. It's great in a pinch, but don't rely on it. So how well do OmniFocus and Things help you to organize your life and get stuff done? To find this out, we're going to compare the two apps on the various parts of a project-based workflow. So that goes from capturing your tasks to organizing them into projects, to planning your day and your week, and to reviewing your projects. We'll also take a separate look at the design and the usability for each of these two apps. I will not consider the price difference or even the prices at all for OmniFocus and Things because frankly, I think that OmniFocus and Things, if you use them properly, are so massively useful that the vast majority of people should easily be able to make back the price of the app with their higher productivity. I also will not cover the Siri integration or the automation features in Things and OmniFocus. The reason for that is that these are power user features. Most people will not use Siri or automation features in Things or OmniFocus very heavily. It ranges somewhere from irrelevant to nice to have for most people. So it just should not be one of the main criteria that you use to decide which of these two apps is best for you. Now with those qualifications out of the way, and now that we know what the criteria are, let's dive into the comparison of these two apps. Your task manager should contain most or all of the things you want to do so it had better be easy and fast to capture tasks. On macOS, both OmniFocus and Things offer quick entry. 
You press a keyboard shortcut and a window pops up on top of all other screens, allowing you to set a task name and perhaps assign a date, a project, and some notes before sending the task to the task manager's inbox. Quick Entry works great in OmniFocus as well as in Things. Using Quick Entry hardly disrupts your work. It's a 10 out of 10 experience in each app. On iOS and iPadOS, the difference is more pronounced. I consistently find myself needing more time to add a task to OmniFocus than I need to add a task to Things. Adding a task to the inbox is fast in either app, but if I want to assign the task to a project right away or set a date, it's just faster in Things. Mind you, we're talking about a second or two here. You can decide how important that is to you. Adding a task is faster in Things because of the magic plus button. You can tap it to create a task where you are. You can slide it to the left to add a task to the inbox, or you can drag the button to somewhere else on screen, and Things will create a task or project there depending on the context. I love the magic plus button. Another way to add tasks to OmniFocus or to Things is to send an email to a special email address that will be processed by the app. This is handy if you receive lots of work assignments by email. Some like to send tasks to their task manager using the share sheet, which now exists on iOS and iPadOS as well as on macOS. For example, if you want to learn how to care for an orchid and you found a YouTube video that explains it that you want to watch later, you can send that video to OmniFocus or to Things. I don't find myself doing this often, but the functionality is there in both apps and works fine. Overall, Things has a small advantage because it's a bit faster to capture tasks, particularly on iOS and iPadOS, but really capturing tasks is fine in either app. What about organizing those tasks into projects though? Creating, editing, and completing projects on macOS is easy in both OmniFocus and in Things. But on iOS and iPadOS, Things again has the edge. In fact, the difference between OmniFocus and Things is even greater than when it comes to adding tasks. In OmniFocus, creating a project requires tapping Home, then Projects, then the relevant folder, and then pressing the New Project button. In Things, you only tap the back arrow at the top and then drag the Magic Plus button to where you want to create the project, or you tap the button and choose New Project. Again, we're talking seconds here, but it can feel frustrating if you normally fly around your phone or your iPad. So Things is definitely ahead when it comes to creating tasks and projects. How do OmniFocus and Things do in organizing your projects though? Can you capture your projects accurately? Can you group them in ways that make sense to you? This is where OmniFocus has a clear advantage over Things. OmniFocus allows you to capture lots of detail while Things keeps your organization simpler. For example, OmniFocus lets you create sequential projects in which you are meant to complete tasks in a fixed order. OmniFocus can hide tasks that are blocked by prerequisite tasks so that you can view only those tasks that you want to work on. Things cannot hide tasks that you can't work on right now because Things does not support sequential projects. For some people, that might be a deal breaker. In fact, this is a key reason why I use OmniFocus. If you want to keep track of exactly what you could work on right now, that's just hard to do in Things. For some people, the simplicity of Things is appealing though. If you tend to overplan, you might be more productive with things because it encourages you to spend less time planning and more time doing. But if you want to capture your projects very accurately and with a high level of detail, OmniFocus is better for that. Now what about organizing your projects into folders or into a hierarchy? Here too, OmniFocus allows for more flexibility while things is more opinionated. In OmniFocus, you can create folders and subfolders which contain projects. Within a project, you can have tasks, which can have subtasks. Things instead has areas, which are like OmniFocus's folders. Areas contain projects, and within projects, you can set up headings. Headings are just a visual feature. They don't do anything, but they can help you structure your project. In Things, you can also create a checklist within each task. For example, a task by groceries can have a checklist of ingredients. So the two apps approach hierarchical organization differently, but either way you can go several layers deep. Things is more opinionated, and you may like that or you may not depending on what you're looking for. A different way to organize your tasks and projects is using tags. OmniFocus lets you do more with tags. For example, you can create tags with location-based notifications. When you apply such a tag to a task in OmniFocus and you're physically near the associated location, OmniFocus will send you a notification reminding you to do that task. You can't do this in Things. 
In fact, in things, tags are pretty much only for filtering your tasks and projects. Another key part of my workflow is using project templates, which you can blessedly do in both OmniFocus and Things. We all have projects that we do every now and then. For example, to create a video such as this one, you can save a lot of time and energy by writing down the steps involved in such projects once and saving the steps for next time. Whenever you want to do the project again, you simply create a fresh instance of it and walk through the steps or tasks. This ensures that you won't forget anything and if you think of an improvement to your process along the way, you can update the project template. Whichever app you choose, using project templates is easy and that is a big plus. Overall, OmniFocus gives you more flexibility in organizing your projects. Things limits your organization, which could be a plus or a minus for you. We talked about using project templates, which are handy for projects that you do every now and then. But what about working with dates more generally in OmniFocus and in Things? Here we encounter one of the biggest differences between these two apps. They treat the dates associated with your tasks and with your projects quite differently. And if one app's way of working with dates makes much more sense to you, that could be enough of a reason to go with that app. Both apps include due dates, although they're called deadlines in things. These work as you would expect. The difference lies in the other types of dates available. In OmniFocus, there are defer dates. When you defer a task until a certain date, you imply that the task is not available to work on until that date, or that you don't intend to work on it until that date. OmniFocus then hides that task from many views. By contrast, Things has a date that I'll call, even though it sounds a bit odd, the when date. When you assign the when date to a task, that implies that you intend to work on that task on that date. So in OmniFocus, you're saying, I'll work on that task on Tuesday or later, while in Things you're saying, I'll work on that task on Tuesday. You can create the same functionality in OmniFocus that Things gives you with when dates by using defer dates in combination with a next tag. This means that OmniFocus gives you more options for working with dates than Things does. And by the way, if you want to learn how the next tag works in OmniFocus, check out my video on that topic. Earlier, we talked about project templates, which are handy for those projects you do every now and then. But what about projects and tasks that repeat often, perhaps even on a fixed schedule? Both OmniFocus and Things let you repeat tasks and projects in many different ways. I've yet to run into a repetition schedule that I could not set up in either app. And after you've got all of your tasks and projects into your task manager, you've got some projects organized, it is time to decide what to work on. How do OmniFocus and Things help you sort through your tasks and identify which ones are available for you to work on now? Things has a handy built-in view called the Anytime view. It shows you the tasks and projects that you can work on anytime, the ones that you haven't already scheduled for some time in the future. OmniFocus does not have a built-in perspective that does this, but you can easily create your own. For example, in my OmniFocus video course, I teach you how to set up an available perspective, which shows all tasks that you can work on right now. This perspective not only takes into account defer dates, but also checks that you don't need to first complete another task before you can work on this one. Custom perspectives like the available perspectives are such a powerful feature of OmniFocus. There's a learning curve to setting them up, but they're very customizable. When you've figured out what to work on, you'll also want to decide when to work on those tasks. You'll want to plan your day and the rest of your week, or maybe even plan a few weeks ahead. So what is that like in these two apps? Both OmniFocus and Things integrate with your calendar. OmniFocus's forecast perspective and Things's upcoming view show you not only tasks that are coming due or that you've planned to work on, but also your calendar events. These views allow you to anticipate what's coming up so that you can decide what you should work on today. So when it comes to working with dates too, both apps cover the basics. But we again see that Things is simpler and more opinionated, while OmniFocus is more flexible yet takes more time to master. Reviewing is an essential part of project-based task management. I recommend reviewing your projects weekly. In fact, if you're using OmniFocus, you'll want to check out my free nine-step weekly review cheat sheet. And the link to that is in the description below the video. A major difference between OmniFocus and Things is that OmniFocus has built-in review functionality, while Things does not. Things' lack of a built-in review feature doesn't stop you from reviewing your projects, but it does require you to manually keep track of which of your projects you've reviewed and when. 
If you tend to review all of your projects in one go, whether that's once a week or on some other fixed schedule, that isn't a big deal. But if you anticipate sometimes getting interrupted mid-review and having to get back to your review later, then in things you'll have to keep track of where you were. By contrast, OmniFocus keeps track for you as long as you mark each project as reviewed when you're done reviewing it. So when it comes to reviewing, OmniFocus clearly has the upper hand. We've talked about the usability of these two apps throughout this review, but people feel strongly about this topic, so I want to discuss it separately. There is a trade-off between ease of use and flexibility. Things looks better and is easier to use. OmniFocus has more options with a steeper learning curve and a more complex interface. I've heard lots of people say that OmniFocus is more flexible and that its extra customization features necessarily mean that OmniFocus cannot be as easy to use as things. Conversely, things is supposedly only so easy to use because it is deliberately limited in some ways, such as in the lack of support for sequential projects. I disagree. I believe the OmniFocus interface could be improved substantially while maintaining the same features. And I believe that adding some extra flexibility to things such as sequential projects or custom views would not make the app harder to use. But for now, the trade-off exists and you should take it into account when choosing which app to use. So which of these two apps is the best choice for you? Well, ideally, you would work with OmniFocus for two weeks, learning good workflows and setting it up just the way you like it. Then you'd spend two weeks using things, also setting up a workflow that works for you. And then you'd go with your gut. But if you can't do that or you don't want to do that, then answer this question. Do you want to be able to highly accurately portray the state of your projects? And do you want to be able to customize your task manager? Then use OmniFocus. Or do you prefer ease of use? Or are you prone to procrastinating by tinkering with your task manager? Then go with things. Both of these are great apps, so you can't go wrong, but that's how you should choose. Now that you've watched this review, it's time for you to pick one of these two apps to get started with. If you're choosing OmniFocus, pick up my free nine step weekly review cheat sheet, which will teach you exactly how to perform a weekly review in OmniFocus, a key step of using a project-based task manager. Or if you're going with things, take a look at my free Things 3 Quick Start Setup, which has a suggested area and project organization so you can fill in your tasks right away and so that you don't procrastinate by tinkering with the setup. Those resources are available for free in the description of the video below. Or if you want to dive deeper right away and really make the absolute most of either OmniFocus or Things, check out my video courses on these apps. Those are over at learn.peterakis.net and again, the link is in the description below. All right, that's it for this video. I just wanna tell you one last thing. Have you ever noticed that on those YouTube channels that you subscribe to, there is a subscription bell next to the subscribe button. What does that bell do? If you subscribe to a channel by default, YouTube will notify you when the channel releases a new video that YouTube thinks you'll be interested in. But you can click on that bell and change the notification setting to all so that you'll get a notification every time the channel puts out a new video. So if you wanna be notified every time I put out a new video, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel and just change that bell, set the setting to all. I hope that was helpful. And as usual, I also hope that you would like the video if you enjoyed the video. And please leave a comment below to tell me what you thought of it or what you'd like to see me cover next time. Either way, have a lovely day. Have you ever noticed that on YouTube channels that you subscribe?